Amigo, your feathered cousins. You know, Donald, you have more relatives here than there are coffee beans in Brazil. For instance, take the one who lives way, way down. Aha! But suppose we let my friend, Professor Holloway, tell us about it. From the beginning to El Finn, the end. Yes, thank you. Professor? This story takes us way down to the South Pole. Rather than have you stand on your heads, let's turn the theater over. There, that's better. Two things you will find most of down here are ice and penguins. It's amazing that anybody would want to live here, but most penguins wouldn't live anywhere else. You couldn't find better weather for fishing, skiing, toboggining, or swimming. And there is nothing the average penguin likes better than a day at the beach. Uh, but come on, let's meet Pablo. He lives down at the end of Main Street. Let's go in and see what's cooking. Pablo could never remember having been warm enough. And so his closest companion was Smoky Joe, his little stove. Between chills, Pablo had one burning desire to spend the rest of his life on some tropical shore. So we see him bravely set forth for the Isle of his dreams. The other penguins turned out to give him a big send-off. But when he gets just so far away from his stove... See what happens? Too bad. Perhaps he'll give up this wild idea. But no, he's off to another stop. This time he's bringing a friend. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Anyway, it was a hot idea. Well, maybe he'll be content to stay at home this time. But no, there he goes, hot-footing it to the land of the sun. By now, the farewell committee has been reduced to two.
discouraging, isn't it? Suddenly, Pablo got one of those ideas that change a person's whole life. A boat. But where would he get a boat? Just watch. Where there's a will, there's a way, they say. And now, the official launching. Day after day, the south wind carried him north. One day, a blanket of fog rolled in. And it was so thick, Must be near Cape Horn. As the fog lifted, he found himself headed straight through the Straits of Magellan and northward along Chile's rocky coast. One day a storm cloud came up. Just a little bitty old storm cloud though and he just tried awful hard to have its first storm. Didn't amount to much, though. One day on lookout, Pablo had a bit of a shock. A water spout off the port bow. But it proved to be the Juan Fernandez Islands where Robinson Crusoe once lived. And still does, apparently. Four bells and all's well. According to Pablo's chart, he should be nearing Viña del Mar. And strangely enough, that's just where he is. He sailed past Lima, capital of Peru, hugging the coastline with a tenacity of purpose seldom found in a penguin. One day, his telescope picked out a city high up on top of a mountain. The map said it was Quito, and it was right smack on the equator. It wasn't as easy to cross, but with a little help from Neptune, he made it. So, making a left turn, he followed the equator, headed for the Galapagos Islands. Ah, oh, that good old sun. Pablo felt that he'd never get enough of it. Oh, he hadn't counted on this. Things looked pretty bad. Man the pumps, she's sprung the leak. Pipe all hands on deck. Do things, get going, take to the lifeboats. Abandon ship, unruffle the mizzen mast and man the poops and, well, don't just stand there, get going. Swap the decks and, heaven. Just what he's been looking for. Pablo has finally reached the Isle of his dreams. And so, as the warm tropical sun sinks slowly in the west, we leave little Pablo, a bird in paradise, a picture of health in his new coat of tan. He should be the happiest penguin in the world. Only... Sometimes he gets to thinking. <laughs>